Hey everybody, Bill Faith here from Limo University and just following up on the Facebook Live that I did earlier this morning. I uh, got a lot of great comments, a lot of uh, good private messages on Facebook and some text messages, but also a few people that are kind of freaked out about the life expectancy uh, topic this morning on the live uh, Facebook. So. I've actually grabbed a good friend of mine here, Richard Fertig, Hello. Uh, who owns Brilliant Transportation out of Brooklyn, New York. And Richard has actually been involved in a pivot to change his business model over the last nine months. I think because of this potential life expectancy as we know it, what, and what I mean by that is just the traditional sedan SUV airport transportation business. Yeah, I would say um, we're pivoting because we see far greater opportunity in other areas. Um, I don't know what the life expectancy is, but I do know that the business as people have enjoyed it for, say, the prior decade right. will be very different than the next decade. And as a business owner, I don't want to stick around and find out that like I got there a little too late or a little right. too early. Um, really, I'm an entrepreneur because I like to innovate, I like to find opportunity, and I like to skate, you know, using the Wayne Gretzky analogy, to where I think the puck is going. Now, that's risky because I might be wrong. Right, right? but you don't want to skate to the puck and then miss the puck, right? So, let me, let me give you a little bit of background on Richard here. Richard is not the person that made the comments that I referred to uh, in the previous video this morning. Richard is a former hedge fund manager working on Wall Street. Born and really bred and uh, born in Costa Rica, but bred in Manhattan, That's right? right. Yeah. The concrete jungle. But Richard started Brilliant six years ago, pre TNCs, pre Uber, pre Lyft, pre Sidecar, pre everybody else. And he's never owned a sedan or an SUV. Why is that, Richard? Well, when I started the business, um, I really, again, want to innovate and think about what is missing in anything that I uh, do. Right. And there was a million sedans and a million SUVs. And so even though I can provide superior service and my chauffeurs are better and we know Manhattan better and there's a million things that one can say, it's not that unique. Right. So what we did was when we entered the space, we started exclusively with the Mercedes Sprinter. Mm -hmm. We offered two or three different builds on the inside from the OEM standard 14 passenger right. people mover straight all the way up into a seven passenger that looked like a jet. And, you know, it was very innovative and people loved it. And uh, now people are doing that more and more. So we continue to innovate and pivot and try and find opportunity. But I think that, um, you know, when I looked at the space, to your point, six years ago, I didn't see that much value in sedans or SUVs. And I'll also, you know, be very direct with your audience because I think that they're all business people and seeking business advice. Right. Like, you charge less for a product, there's less margin. Right. Now, billionaires like Ikea have figured it out. Right. Right. Amazon has figured out how to work on very low profit. Right. To me, I would rather deliver a exceptional service and charge a premium for that and deliver great value. Sure, absolutely. Right? So that's why we didn't start with any sedans or SUVs, and uh, that's what we do. So really, you kind of built your model around the ask, mm -hmm. right? The, the ask is that Richard was going after higher-end clientele, so he was going to give a higher-end vehicle experience, larger capacity. Obviously, the buses and the sprinters you're talking right. about aren't just straight Mercedes or... Uh, you know, standard interior. I've seen your equipment on video. Um, they're phenomenal, but it's really about the value add in that ask outside of just the in-car experience, right? That's really the Look, brilliant difference. That's it, and and I think we have a advantage in that insofar as because I was in the hedge fund space and traveled so much, I was the client. Right. And I think a lot of the industry operators have a competitive advantage on the operations end of it because maybe they worked at companies or they started with a smaller fleet and they've grown really successful businesses and kudos to them. I think it's fantastic. But I think my ability was to come in as the client right. and address client needs yep. and charge a fair price. Right. And a fair price that's extremely profitable. I mean, we've talked the last 24 hours since you've been here, you probably have some of the highest rates in the limousine industry for the services that you provide, correct? Well, I not even really in the limousine industry, but in the transportation industry. I think that you're that's doing. by design. Right, it's absolutely. not an accident. Uh, 100%. Okay. And a lot of the people that are in the sedan game and the airport transportation game that's been the gravy train for this industry for the last 20, 30, 40 years, right? That's now a race to zero, unfortunately. Would you agree? Look, I think that. Um, the, the TNCs have raised billions of dollars, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but they've raised billions of dollars, and they're in a customer acquisition race, and they'll spend as much as it takes, and they'll give away service, and I get 
emails. I just got one this morning. 50% off all lift rides all week long. Huge. How do you do that if you're running an employee-based operation with, you know, your fixed costs such as rent and electricity, and there's no 50% right. off on any of that stuff, right? The only way you can do it is when you have a war chest, and the battle that you're fighting is for customer acquisition at all costs. And that brings up really what I was alluding to in this morning's video, everybody, is the, the industry stalwart, who I believe is one of the smartest uh, people in this industry, is the one that made the comment about you know the limousine industry potentially having a three to five year life expectancy and being even on the short end of that at the three years. And that's because Uber alone, forget about Lyft or Via that I'd never even heard of until you told me about it last night or any of the others that are out there, has how much money allocated over the next 12 months? Over a billion dollars for customer acquisition, like just on social media, correct? Right, that's it. Over a billion, that's with a B, dollars for customer acquisition just on social media. So how does our entire industry as a whole compete with that? You know, it's interesting because in one of the sessions, I don't know if you were present, um, we were talking about that. It was a Silicon Valley um, editor and VC, angel investor, and he was talking about that war chest that these companies right. have for advertising and social media and customer acquisition, and a member of the audience, very well known, you know, sort of said, listen guys, it's not like we're um, <coughs> not in the same playing field and we do have a war chest and so on and so forth, and I thought it was kind of interesting. He was like, the NLA has a $400,000 a year PR budget. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I can tell, that's missing a couple of zeros, like $1.3 billion right. versus 400000 that the industry as a whole has. Right. Like, that's not in the same league. 100%. And, that, and that's what I mean by iterating your model. And as I talked about in the video this morning, you know, going left when everybody else is going right. Richard's going left right now while everybody else is going right. The other analogy that I'll drop on you uh, right now is the analogy that – actually, I'm not even going to share that analogy. I'll save that for a later video. But I don't believe that the industry is going to be extinct understand the context of what we're talking about and what I said earlier this morning. It's as we know it. The bread and butter, the sedans and SUVs for airport transportation, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to compete without extremely differentiating yourself in your value proposition for those customers. So on the previous video, you'll look at Matthew Johnson from AJL, so get in the bus business. And I'm like, that's 100% correct. That's what Richard did six years ago, not purchasing a sedan and an SUV. God knows I'm never getting back in as an operator, ever. I call it an entrepreneurial seizure on my, on my part. I love this industry, but if I did get back in, I would probably follow Richard's model. One, I probably would never own equipment. Two, I would stay away from the airport transfers. Very low margin, requires high volume, lots of effort on the back end. Um, and I would be going after the big events. I would be going after the big equipment, which you can do over the road trips with motor coaches, uh, there's a company in my hometown of, of Nashville that's a virtual company. They're about an $18 million bus yeah. and logistics management company, and they don't own any equipment. And they have huge Fortune 100 companies, and they're extremely profitable. So when everybody else is going left, you need to be going right. That's what Richard's been doing for the last nine months. And I would probably, most of you don't know Richard because he's not in the affiliate game, and he's not present at every single show. He only came down here because we spoke right. a few days ago and decided to come down uh, for a couple of other reasons. But at the end of the day, you've got to be better than your competition. I think we all know that, right? But that's not in your mindset. That has to be from your customer's mindset and then the way that you're presenting yourself to your prospects to be able to acquire them. So what is your real separator and whatever service you're providing, and then you have to deliver on that. And I think you've done a tremendous job. And the last thing that I'll share to you with that is if you do look at Go, I think it's go-brilliant.com, right. yep. and then Richard is actually just like I do the Ask Limo You show. Uh, it's probably backwards, but nonetheless. Right, brilliant. Ex expect more. I like that. Richard's doing the Simply Brilliant show, and I think That's you right. put out 20 or 21 episodes. And three more in editing. So uh, Awesome. And you really need to become a media company, and what Richard is doing, I don't think I've, I think I've seen every one of your episodes, and I don't think I've ever seen you sell anything, right? No, it's not about us or what we do, it's, the, the basic premise is people want to do business with people they want to do business 100%. with, right? So person to person, whether it's B2C or B2B, and I can't tell you 
how I monetize it, what the return on investment is, but I know that when people do due diligence on the company, mm -hmm. my name pops up, they probably do due diligence on me, right. they see all this stuff, which is interesting and thought-provoking, whether they agree with it or they don't, doesn't really matter, but it's, you know, very in the moment, it's content, it's intelligent, it's articulate, right. and hopefully they're finding out a little bit more about uh, myself and my value system and what I think about and how I think, and hopefully that's generating people that will develop deep relationships with me because we're not a transactional business that's another point that I would make um, you know the airport runs and even if you're servicing the same uh, corporate customer and you're going to and from the airport you know you need to build deep relationships with the people that are in the seats um, one thing that I wanted to just mention I shared this with my team uh, earlier and I'm gonna I guess I'm not gonna put it up because I don't think it'll show up but this was uh, on my Instagram feed I follow you know entrepreneurial uh, news feeds and entrepreneurs and I encourage you all to do that and this was this just struck me so I shared it with my team don't be afraid of being different be afraid of being the same as everyone else amen right so like whatever you do and you think you do it best focus on that and the key takeaway on on that focus is like make time for it as an operator I can tell you I understand Someone's late, somebody blew this, something happened, the phone rang, the customer's upset, the chauffeur didn't show up, the vehicle broke down. I mean, I get it. But if that's what you're dealing with 24-7, 365, and you're not focused on your value proposition and who you do business with and building those relationships and where you're going in the future, then your time may be even less than those three years. I, I, I agree. Right. And, you know, look, I'm not here to scare anybody with, you know, the industries going away in three years. That is not the context. Understand the context. Just like... When, and I don't, were you in Vegas? You, no. You, no, you weren't in Vegas. Just like when I did the keynote at LCT and I told everybody I was an Uber customer. I'm an Uber customer because I have to do research. And if you're going to hire my agency, I think Richard would want me to be an Uber customer. No Uber is good as anybody else or any of your other competitors, right? What I'm telling you is understand the context of really what we're talking about. Every market's going to be different, right? And your service is going to be different, hopefully. But if you're the same, if you're in that bottom, 50th percentile or lower on your rates and using old equipment and haven't invested in the technology and don't have high touch and don't have great customer nurturing campaigns and aren't doing physical contact with your customers, then you're in jeopardy. But if you really are doing all of those things to separate yourself from what the TNCs yeah. are doing, because remember, as I stated in Vegas, Uber, Lyft, they never touch me as a client or any of their other clients. That's a competitive advantage for a traditional operator and even for what Richard does in his business model is you get to touch me. I had one of the best trips I have ever used in a sedan about three weeks ago in Phoenix. And it was with Jason Kaplan from the dri driver provider. It was flawless. I asked the chauffeur a couple of really key questions uh, as we were pulling into the hotel that he didn't have the answers to. And I don't expect a chauffeur right. to have any answers, but you know what he did? He carried a great, intelligent conversation the entire 20-minute trip. TNC drivers can't do that. And the other thing that happened is I asked for some specific gastro pubs or restaurants within walking distance around that hotel. Right. You know what happened 20 minutes after I got done? I got a text message from him. He called into the office. They did research. They gave me three recommendations. Jessica, my director of marketing, and I walked down to one that night, and it was phenomenal. You can't get that type of an experience from them. Now, was that chauffeur-driven? Because he was a great chauffeur. Was that training-driven? Was that cultural-driven? All by Jason Kaplan? I don't know. All I can tell you is as a customer, I had a tremendous experience, and I will go back. The other thing that I would just um, say is I think the era of being an independent, uh, smaller company and being protective and this is my client and so on needs to evolve. Right? And you need right. to develop relationships with trusted affiliates nationwide or globally, people that you will trust with those clients. And I know we all farm in and we farm out, and that's standard, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like going from a place of scarcity and protectionism where you have high walls and you're worried and you don't share and you don't communicate and you don't put out content to one of full transparency and you have interesting dialogue and discussions and you let your guards down and you say, here's what I'm scared of, how do I fix this, how can we work together? And I think the opportunity for the industry as a whole to come together has never been greater. Right. And if people think creatively and work with people that they know and trust and admire, I think one plus one can equal three. But if the industry says, the TNCs don't affect me and my clients would never do this and I don't trust him with that and I'll only send this, like, 
that's that's a slow bleed into oblivion. But everybody should come together, pick your partners, pick who you want to work with, figure out how you can work together, do reciprocal stuff. And I think that you know we're in a, a space right now where we should be operating from abundance and where we're going to work together as opposed to protectionism and you know I don't really know them and I don't like them and I'd rather turn down the work or you know I, now's the time I, I agree on the national level I think it's even been harder on a local level yep but look there's been some huge victories in you know Austin and you know DC and a lot of great places things going on at the Newark airport and the limousine traditional limousine industries battle against yep. the TNCs keep up those battles fight to the death but continue to iterate don't wait to see the outcome that's really the message and one today. last thought um, the, the uh, Silicon Valley person that was in the uh, LCT Summit Leadership Series that we just attended uh, basically made one key point and I think this is really valid and this affects every single person that you reach which mm -hmm. is a great thing that you have such great reach um, if you think of the, the TNCs not as competitors, because they don't think of you as competitors, mind you, they think they like own the space and they can do what you do for better and, and less expensive, but view them as just logistics people. They're moving whatever, right? Like they can move books, they can move food, they can book people. What's missing in all of that is the experience, which is what you were saying earlier. Um, if you think of yourself as a value-added experience <coughs> provider, then you can charge a fair price for that. But the entire experience has to be really good from the phone call, which, by the way, people don't really enjoy, to the reservationist, who, again, might be very competent and knowledgeable and friendly, but, like, it still takes time. Right. Nobody wants to spend that time. Absolutely. And then the reservation has to come back with the confirm, and you need to send them the driver's name and phone number. They don't want to call a second time and say, what's the, what's the guy's name? The billing has to be quick. The billing has to be transparent. You know, when we started six years ago as a client, we're all in pricing. None of this plus plus and fees right. and service and fuel. By the way, fuel went from you know 50 bucks to 120 back down to 40 dollars per barrel. barrel. What is this service fee? Right. Why are we charging service fees on on fuel? And even when I send work out to affiliates, but I think I, a lot I think a lot of people are still charging that same service fee. That's what I'm because saying. Because their mentality is is they're trying to recoup. What they've yeah, lost but, in but the it's past. not fair and it's not transparent. So and it doesn't customer. have the client. It doesn't right. have the client's interest in mind. It has the operator's interest. Stop thinking as an operator. Start thinking as a client. Do you like to be like cut, 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 cut? You have no idea what it costs. Right. When we send work out to affiliates, and by the way, we're sending more and more work out to affiliates. A we're lot of work. Contact all of you. We want an all-in price. I don't care what the price is. Let's just make this simple. It could be a hundred dollars. Okay, but what I don't want to do is have my reservation is say it's a hundred dollars plus 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 plus, and then when the bill comes, sometimes a week later. I mean, I can't believe it takes that long to bill us. Right. It's not that like the math doesn't add up. Figure out what you charge, whatever the number is. It could be a hundred, it could be one ten, it could be one twenty. I don't care. Whatever you need to charge, charge us. But just tell me what it's going to cost because then I can do my business and charge appropriately. But if I can't, and I'm in the industry, if I can't figure out what my costs are, what my cost of goods sold are, how can I use you? Right. That's a, that's a very valid point. And I think the analogy that I'll give to you, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, with it, which is a Southwest hub. We've got Delta, just got JetBlue with some selected routes. We have American, but Southwest does about 67% of all the flights inbound and outbound. So I don't really get to experience Virgin a whole lot. <laughs> The difference that I look at is our industry needs to be Virgin Air. Right. We, we've got to be Virgin Atlantic. I think right. Is what, Virgin. I've never flown Virgin because I don't go from Newark or LaGuardia to LAX or San Francisco. I'm sure you probably I fly do. Virgin in first class it's, a lot. It's, it's my preferred. Not um, first class. I'm a small-time entrepreneur. I, 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 but. Sorry. I didn't even put words <laughs> in your mouth. But you know what? I'm stuck in getting B-21 right. flying on Southwest because of my market that I'm in. And for me, that's like being in a TNC vehicle. Yep. I want to be in a Virgin airline. I and, you'll, and you'll pay a small premium, and, right? Yeah, but I don't even need to fly first class right. because I've been conditioned on the Southwest mentality, which is great. And I love Southwest, and I love their culture, and I love their branding, but I want more legroom. Right. I want more comfort. And I wouldn't even need to upgrade and pay for first class because that experience is so much better in coach, right? And that's what needs to happen inside of our industry. Agreed? I, Completely agree. So think about what it is that you do best. It could be on the client side. It could be the chauffeuring side. It could be hiring or training or recruiting or maybe your maintenance is second to none. But figure out, like, what it is. And, and we went through a very simple exercise, and I'm happy to share it with your audience. Maybe you'll find it helpful. We went through a really simple exercise as we started our pivot. And we said, if we were to close down tomorrow, who would miss us? 
Is it the guy going to the airport? Is it the guy going to the Hamptons? Is it the hotel that we have a contract with? Is it the event planner? Who is it? Mm -hmm. And when we literally put a gun to our head and said, if we're closing tomorrow, who misses us? It really helped us focus on who would miss us and why they would miss us and what we do for them. And, and that is such a valid point, everyone, because if you went through my free chauffeur recruiting training, it's all about focusing on the after. That is the outcome of what happens when you hire that chauffeur right. and they come to work for you. It's the same thing with your client because that's what Richard was just said, and we didn't even talk about this until just now. He's focusing on what's the outcome of that client if he was to close his doors. And that means all those clients that you believe would stay with you are outcome focused. He's outcome focused for them, not only in the acquisition process, but in the service process to change their life in one form or another. And just to take it one step further, like don't just go through the exercise because it's you know fun to do and you have nothing better to do. I'm sure you're all really busy. If you go through the exercise and you actually do this, then you have to commit to it. So what that meant was like we literally turned down work that right. wasn't part of our future. Right. We literally terminated contracts, very successful contracts. We closed offices. You know that's really challenging. As a small business entrepreneur and operator, I can tell you, I feel the same thing that you guys do. It's really crazy to say like, sorry, Bill, we can't help you with that, but why don't you contact such and such or we're not the right fit but you're never going to get there you're never going to make that pivot you're never going to innovate you're never going to focus on your core strengths if you continue doing the same thing and just by way of a real simple example let's say I wanted to lose 20 pounds there's a few things I could do I could go to the gym more I should watch what I eat I should do both of those things at a minimum right but if I continue to eat exactly the same way and I don't go to the gym I'm not losing 20 pounds right. no chance yeah. but if Bill hands me a dessert and I say, no, Bill, I'm on a diet, I'm not eating dessert, and I turn away the dessert, I'm on the path towards reaching my goal. So 100%. talking about it is easy. It's the actual execution. It's the pain. It's turning down clients. It's saying goodbye to not profitable clients. It's selling vehicles. It's moving in a direction. It's taking a risk. It's challenging, but I think it needs to be done by the industry as a whole. Right. I, I agree. And I think there is a, a really great piece of content, if you all haven't seen it, um, and it's a video that Richard, I think, released last week, video 20. Oh, so um, yeah, Simply Brilliant, episode 20. Yeah, so I assume if you just go to YouTube and type in Simply Brilliant Show, you can probably find it and then go to episode 20. I would highly recommend that you all watch it. It really isn't talking, it is really about the TNCs and about innovation, but it's kind of coming partially from your operator experience, but a lot of it, I think, is really manifested from your Wall Street experience, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. The, 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 the thought of, this, of the show focuses on sort of the speed of uh, innovation that's happening now, right? And we talk about Uber, we talk about Airbnb, and we talk about how quick these markets were like basically dominated from a, a startup and a concept to like mass adoption. Right. And so we use some of these um, companies that we're all familiar with as examples. It's not really talking about sort of why you need to change, or it's not a scare thing. It's just sort of like you know, what used to disrupt in the space of 20 years then got compressed to 10 years and Airbnb and Uber, five years. Right. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, one thing that Richard said is when you go through the exercise, you have to execute. So you have to execute on the changes that you're making today. And I think the ones that do execute and execute quickly and go to implementation and can actually benefit their customers to be really, truly customer focused, as you said, put your mindset as the customer behind your business, then you are going to expand that life expectancy of your business. And it could go from three to five years to 10 or 20 years. It could be forever, but you've got to innovate and be different. Look, if you focus on your cores and you work with the right, what we call personas, and you provide value to them, they're not gonna find that anywhere else. That's why they're with you. That's why you're focused on them. But if you try and be all things to all people, and you do the airport runs, and the sedans, and you pr compete on price, and you don't really know what you do, and you're putting out fires, and you're not thinking about your business, you're sort of running around and spinning your wheels, and that's very challenging. Right. I, I, I agree. I think focus is extremely important. So number one takeaway from this for me is understand that you need to innovate, you need to make change, and you need to continue to improve. And my recommendation is go in the opposite direction of what your competitors are doing. So even if you're in a market that doesn't have TNCs, still look at your other traditional companies, your taxis, your bus companies, your shuttle companies, your limousine competitors, and go in the opposite direction. Now, focus on your existing 
and then focus on your existing customer base first, right? Then look at all the services that you provide from, and break it down by vehicle utilization, service types that you're doing, consolidate them into your most profitable services that you're delivering, and really put a lockdown focus on trying to grow your business in those services. Don't be afraid to turn down those clients. I mean, I, I, I love the quote from the gambler. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when to walk away. Yeah. I fired seven clients in the last 12 months personally, right? And I think you I said think. you got rid of some clients that were not profitable. And it's not always just about dollars and cents. It's about how difficult they are to work with. It's and not even that. It's like what it, what it does for you and your business, right? Like, uh, so absolutely. for instance, you're going to find the greatest success if you figure out what it is that you personally like to do. Like, if you're a gearhead and you're really into mechanics and you love the maintenance and so on and so forth, and, and the ride itself is just what generates revenue, like, try and figure out how you can help maintain your competitor's fleets or whatever, because you will, chances are, be in a much better place going forward. Or, like in my particular case, I think we had great systems that we developed for maintenance and operations and legal and compliance and all that stuff, but that's not really what does it for me. When I was in the hedge fund space, right. we had teams of people that handled all that right. because that wasn't what motivated me. What I really like is solving solutions and working with clients and developing deep relationships. I don't need fleet. I don't need compliance for that. Right. What I need is somebody else to handle that, and we're finding that via our trusted affiliates now, right. and I spend my time and energy working with clients and providing solutions. And on a personal, but it could be the opposite. I could have been a gearhead and, right. and not like the client. And you're doing that not just on the phone, not just via email. You're actually traveling the country when needed to meet in person too, right? Not only for clients, we're developing relationships with our affiliates, and we're doing quality control and and uh, visits on site to understand what the affiliates do, how they do it. Because if I'm going to trust my VIP clients with your operations then I need to understand what it is that you do and how you do it. Right. So, I mean, just like in the last couple of weeks, you've gone from New York to L.A. to San Francisco. San to Diego. San Diego, Cabo San Lucas. Miami. Mexico, Miami, and then going back to New York, right? Okay. I mean, and that's all that's because... Three weeks. Yeah, relationships, quality control. I'm sure there was some prospecting in there sure. as well. You know, a lot of those dynamics on that personal level. Look, I'm an, I'm an Internet marketing guy, but you can only do so much online. There still has to have that human element, and that's the biggest competitive advantage that you guys have over the TMT, so leverage that. If I could just add one last thing, and I know we're going to... Man, you on, talk a lot. I know. Well, listen, you get two guys that are <laughs> believing content, and we're just going to keep generating content. This is my so longest face. Facebook Live video ever. We're approaching Good. 30 minutes, so you got three minutes. Look, what I would say um, on a very personal level is, this is a, a, a challenging environment that we're all faced with, but instead of looking at it as negative or from a fearful perspective, like it's just as opportunistically uh, rich as it is challenging. So instead of saying that the glass is half full, or in this particular case, all this talking, the mind's empty, um, instead of the glass being half empty, view it as half full. 100%. And like, literally, I woke up and, and spoke to all my team and said, guys, what are we going to do? How are we going to innovate? What are we doing? And I can tell you that, you know, there's a different level of risk tolerance. My wife is very list, uh, risk averse. She doesn't like risk. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm very risk uh, taking. I love taking risk and innovating. And my team is somewhere in there. And so a challenge as a, as, as a leader of the organization is to get them comfortable taking risks and throwing out what might seem like silly ideas or bad ideas. And I got to tell you, that process of turning too my team and saying, guys, we need to innovate. We need to keep innovating. And by the way, the pivot that we started nine months ago, I think, is a step in the right direction, but it's not the full step. It's like a half step. Let's keep going. What else can we do? What else can we monetize? What else can we do? Has generated an opportunity that I think is killer. And um, at some point in time, we're all going to be speaking about this. But I think the point is, you got to view this as challenging and exciting and that not that you feel when you turn down clients and you sell vehicle or whatever you do, it's not going to feel comfortable. Instead of focusing on the, on the pain, focus on the opportunity. And again, in the exercise realm, no pain, no gain, right? Like go through it, but enjoy it. Embrace it when you feel a little sore after lifting. Like that's a positive thing. You're getting better. You're getting stronger. I agree with you, but that actually might be the one of the worst movies that I've ever seen <laughs> with Marky Mark and The Rock. It was actually shot down here in Miami. If anybody's ever seen that, it was brutal. I love it, though. I'm just trying to make a joke, and I'm really not that funny. So, um, Richard. Thank you very much um, for sharing this with me. Uh, full disclosure for everybody, Richard is not a client. We just started talking about this really last night, um, you know, really a couple of days ago and then ended up last night. Um, the, the large operator in regards to three-year life expectancy, remember, understand the context of what we're saying about this. 
Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, there's a comment, good luck for that. You know, risky, you definitely have to take risks, and that's what Richard just said. He's willing to do as an entrepreneur. I know I am. I look at my business model with inbound marketing agents has completely evolved in the last 12 months, right, and gone from really a, a service-based business. We still provide services, but the majority of that is switching over to being product-based right. and to make it more accessible to our the entire industry on an affordable price point, which is what's needed. So take some of that advice. If you have questions, hit up Richard on, you know, Richard Furtag on Facebook. Go brilliant. Um, you know, check out video number 20 in his series. It's awesome. I think it's one of the best pieces of content that's been put out by an operator um, or even a non-operator, for that fact, on YouTube. Uh, let us know your questions down below, and both Richard and I will be commenting. And I just want to uh, thank everybody for watching. The fact that you're watching this, whether live or after the fact, right. you're already on the right path. Right? It's all about content. It's all about education. It's all about doing the hard work. Bill has a wealth of knowledge. I really respect what he does, both in the Limo University and in content and funnels. And if you need help, he's a great resource. Again, I'm not a client. I'm also not that operator that said there's a three-year expectancy. I have very strong opinions. I'm happy to chat with you about my thoughts. But um, I think the fact that you guys are uh, paying attention to this and thinking about your business is a great start. So I yeah. encourage you all to uh, continue. I agree. And you know, likewise to everybody there, to Tariq, thank you for the kind words. Um, you know, I think that you know the number one thing is just take action. You know, don't don't do the analysis. Don't sit back. Don't wait. Take action today and start preparing for your future. We'll have more live broadcasts coming from the LCT Leadership Summit. We're down here at the SLS in Miami. It's beautiful. We got to get out to the pool and uh, you know to the beach, I guess. And we'll be shooting a lot of different videos. So if you have questions or topics, I'm going to be grabbing some other people. Hopefully, we can get the. Dawson Rudders, David Sealinger, Scott Solombrino, some other operators down there. I'll tell you, I've been to about five of these, Richard, but just before we sign off in the last 20 or 30 seconds, I think yesterday and today has probably been the best one that I've ever attended out of the LCT Leadership Summit. The content and the discussions that are so intimate that you can't get in Vegas or no. you know at some of the bigger shows has been really dynamic. I've learned a lot in the, in the last 24 hours from you I, and from a lot of other people. I think um, the difference from my perspective, and I haven't been to the summit before, is people finally seem like they're interested in doing something. And they don't and necessarily know what it is, but like right. there's there's movement. I think what I've seen in the past is a um, minimization of the threat or right. a rationalization. My customer's this, I can't right. do that, blah, blah, blah. Now it's kind of like, all right, guys, what do we do? How do and we do it's it? A, it's a closer, tighter bond that's, today, which I think is part, part about the intimacy of this event, but I also think the progress that's being made you know, inside the industry. So keep fighting the good fight. Learn, innovate, implement, execute. That's what Ask we're all about. Ask questions. I, I, I'm here. Most of you even have my cell phone number. I may not be able to get to you on cell. Hey, Ty, the great Ty Bobbitt uh, just walked by, guys, as we're coming. Awesome event down here. Richard, again, thank you very much. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be coming back to you live with some more videos. Um, just put your comments down below. Thank you, everybody. Take care.